Hey guys, only one objective to go over today. It's on permeability and porosity. It's really important that you take good notes here because we're going to be using those notes for a lot of the activities that we do in class over the next week or so. So listen really well, take some good notes, try to put some pictures in your notes as well to highlight the concepts. I'll check those notes for a stamp in class. And as always, let me know if you have any questions. You can get a hold of me through Edmodo or email. Okay, so there's two words I want to get into right away. And the first one is porosity. That's P-O-R-O-S-I-T-Y. And porosity just refers to the space that's within rocks, or the space that's between sediment or the void space. Void means empty. So it's kind of like little pore spaces in your skin. That's what porosity is. And you can measure porosity. The measure of porosity is how much empty space is within that rock. Here's a, a brownie, and if we take a look here at this brownie, in the in the actual layer here of the brownie, you can see a bunch of little holes all over the place. Those holes are pore spaces. They're void spaces within the brownie itself. Now, you can also see this in a sponge as well. A sponge has a whole bunch of holes here all along the sides and all throughout the sponge. These are pore spaces. The more pore spaces there are, the greater the porosity. Well, there's another property we need to talk about, and it's called permeability, P-E-R-M-E-A-B-I-L-I-T-Y, permeability. And when we talk about permeability, what we're talking about is the ability of a fluid to transfer through the pore spaces within a rock. So if something is permeable, that means that water can flow through it, much like a sponge. If you were to dunk this sponge in water, water would flow right through the sponge. But if for whatever reason, water couldn't flow through this sponge because it was trapped either in the top or the bottom or the middle, we would say that that rock would be impermeable. I-M-P-E-R-M-E-A-B-L-E, -E -E, impermeable. So two major concepts. Porosity, or something that's porous, talks about the amount of empty space within a rock. Amount of empty space within a rock. And permeability talks about the ability of a fluid to transfer through a rock or rock layers. So something needs to be porous if it's going to be permeable. But then the question is, are all things that are porous, are they all permeable? We're going to get into that in just a minute. Good, Brian. Hi, here we have a glass of flour. Well, you know what? I put this flour here for a reason. I want to pour some water on top here. And let's go ahead and just throw that right on top there. I made the water colored using vanilla. I couldn't find any other food coloring. But I'm doing this for a reason. We're going to let this sit here for a little bit. And we're just going to let it hang out. Now I'm going to be careful not to spill it because I don't want to get it all over the computer. But you're going to notice something is not happening. Go ahead and watch this for a few minutes and uh, see if you can figure it out. Bye. There ain't nothing in the world that I like better than bacon, lettuce, and homegrown tomatoes up in the morning and out in the garden. Pick you a ripe one, don't get a hard and Well, you plant them in the springtime and eat them in the summer. All winter without them is a culinary bummer. And I forget all about the sweating and the digging every time I go out and pick me a big one. Homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. What would life be without homegrown tomatoes? Only two things that money can't buy. And that's true love and homegrown tomatoes. You can go out to eat, folks, and that's for sure. But it ain't nothing a homegrown tomato won't cure. You can put them in a salad, you can put them in a stew. You can make your very own tomato juice. You can eat them with eggs, you can eat them with gravy. Eat them with beans, pinto, or an egg. You can 
put them on the side, put them in the middle, put a homegrown tomato on a hot cake griddle, said homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes, what would life be without homegrown tomatoes, only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love and homegrown tomatoes. In every yard you see Well, if I die Don't you bury me In some box In some cemetery Cause out in the garden That'd be much better Where I could be Pushing up homegrown tomatoes Homegrown tomatoes Homegrown tomatoes What would life be Without homegrown tomatoes Only two things That money can't buy And that's true love And homegrown What would life be without homegrown tomatoes? Only two things that money can't buy And that's true love and homegrown tomatoes All right, so did you miss me? I'm back. Now, it's been about, I don't know, three, four, five minutes or so. And if you'll notice, that water hasn't gone anywhere. It's still sitting right there on top of the flower. Now, there's space between the little, bit, little bits of flour. This isn't cement. It's loosely packed flour. In fact, if I pour this water off, and let me move this, because I think I'm done with it, and I scoop off the wet part, I'm going to wind up with a bunch of dry flour. So the flour underneath is dry. The flour on top never let the water through. Why do we do that? I wanted to demonstrate the concept of impermeable, meaning that even though something is porous, it has space between each little individual grain, it doesn't necessarily transmit the water. That's impermeable, or it doesn't transmit the fluid. That's what impermeable is. Now, if we take a look at this, here's some Cheerios, and here's some milk. Here I have something that is both permeable and porous, meaning the space between the Cheerios and the holes between the Cheerios can get filled with the milk, so that makes it porous, and the fluid's allowed to transmit through it, so that makes it permeable. So we have a couple of concepts here we just discussed. Porosity, which is the space between each one of the individual grains or the individual uh, Cheerios or the individual bits of flour here. And then permeability, the ability of a fluid to transmit through a substance. The Cheerios is definitely permeable. The flour with the water was impermeable meaning it couldn't flow through. I prefer the permeable. Delicious. All right, so in this video, we covered permeability and porosity. Again, make sure you got some really good notes. Try to draw some pictures based on those notes as well. I'm gonna check those notes for a stamp in class. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to send me a message on Edmodo or go to fishphs.com and send me a message via email or on the contacts page.